Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Today, we're going to talk about launching you. You hear a lot of talk in the business world about launching a program, launching a course, launching a business, launching a book. And today, we're going to talk about how God can use writing a book to actually launch you into more growth, healing, and making more money and experiencing more opportunities in your business. But first, he wants to launch you. My guest today is Sherry Ward. Sherry, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. I'm so excited to be here. Good. Thanks I'm glad. I guess. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So before we dive into this juicy conversation, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to this point in your journey? Yeah. So I was in a wilderness season for about 14 years and coming out of that, I felt like God said, write the book, write the book, write the book. And so he said it over and over. He said, you have a portal to show up for. And if you don't write the book, you're going to miss it. And I thought, I have no idea what a portal is, but it's some kind of open door and I don't want to miss it. So I wrote the, I wrote the book in about three months with three kids under 10, which was crazy. And after that, everybody's like, oh, how do I write a book? How do I write a book? And that birthed uh, Square Tree Publishing at that time. I love that. And you, faith has been a significant part of your journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it's the reason I was in the wilderness is not because I was in sin or doing crazy stuff. It was, I gave God my yes. And right after I gave God my yes, he said, are you willing to pay the price? And I said, well, I thought everything was a free gift of God. (laughs) And then it went completely silent and we wrestled and wrestled. And finally I said, yes, I'm willing to pay the price. And immediately it was a job season. And like, thing after thing after thing. And I just got plummeted. Um, Health, all my family went in the hospital, five car accidents, none of them my fault. Like the house, the dream home that we built from the ground up gone. Like everything was just stripped away at that time um, during that wilderness season. Wow. And you're here to talk about it. (laughs) And I'm standing still. (laughs) Which is God's grace, right? Like that's how he works. He brings us through every single time, even though it can be really hard if we keep the faith and trust, he'll bring us through eventually. Yeah. As as hard as that is to believe sometimes when we're going through it, right? (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Um, And sometimes I think we hold on to some of those negative experiences for a really long time. And this is sort of the root of your upcoming book, Launch You. Yes, I'm so excited about this. And every time I talk to people about, they're like, oh, they lean in and they want to hear more. But it was during one of our launches, um, because, you know, we're really book focused and centric and trying to get the books out and published. And God told me, he said, I am more concerned about launching them than I am about the book itself. And so, you know, translating that into your company, you know, he's more interested in launching you as opposed to just the book, just the product, just the coaching, just whatever else you're doing. He's more interested in launching you as a person. So tell me a little bit about what that means. And I know from our conversation that you have a heavy focus on mindset work before people write the book, because if we don't have a positive mindset, a Christ-like mindset, we aren't going to be able to move forward or be able to write with the clarity and confidence that he's called us to do so, right? Yeah, exactly. Because we were seeing a lot of really solid Christians that would just get locked up in the book process, whether it was the writing, whether it was like after they wrote Um, and they were ready to publish, then they would freak out and freeze up. And then they kept wanting to spin out in editing because it's that perfectionism. I just have to get it right. I've got more to share. I'm not ready. Or even when they published, then it was the whole marketing piece of, oh, I'm just going to go write the second book because they didn't want to focus in on marketing that piece. So 
one example I can give you is one of our authors is Dr. Evelyn Garcia, and she wrote three books. One of them was called uh, Doctora Diasese because she's Spanish. She's originally from El Salvador, and she is a doctor uh, psychologist, and she wrote a book about forgiveness. Her book didn't sell a million copies and get on the Wall Street Journal list or the New York Times. However, it opened doors for the United Nations of El Salvador to come knocking and they asked her and invited her to come speak, which is amazing in and of itself. But the real thing that got to me was they asked her to speak on the topic of her book, which was forgiveness. So that's just wild. It's like, why would the United Nations come to you and ask and have you talk about forgiveness of all the topics they could have talked about it? They took the topic of your book. However, the Lord backing up before she wrote the book took her through some heavy um, healing in the area of forgiveness in her own life with family members and things that she had been through. So if she hadn't gone through that, um, then launching her into that, she wouldn't have had the power, the authority and the healing to then go on to the United Nations to speak about healing. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and that's just one example. Like you can write yeah, that's a, just one. a memoir or a book that is not necessarily about business and it's still going to open the door for opportunity for your business if that's what God has intended. But I think you mentioned something before and like writing a memoir before we actually write the business book, sometimes we get that healing, the cleansing, the the new perspective and more open-mindedness to be able to then write more effectively the book that will help our business. Yeah. It's like, sometimes we want to jump right into that business book, especially as uh, business owners and C-suite and, and entrepreneurs, we want to jump right into the business book and the lead generation and all of that. But what I'm finding is a lot of times people will take us back to our memoir. He'll take us back to your story or certain pieces of your story because he wants to bring the healing. And one of the a poignant example I can give you is when I was 16 years old, I worked for Rockwell International. And so I was there when all of us were in the galley with the big screen TVs uh, watching the Challenger go up. And we were all clapping and cheering and yay, we did it. Like we got a space shuttle into space and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, 73 seconds later, it blew up. And it was all because of an O-ring and the engineers had already flagged that as a potential issue if it got too cold that it could malfunction. And they just ignored it. And I feel like in business, when we ignore some of those areas that we need to work on, and for me personally, working with a mindset coach, I didn't realize how many issues I really had that I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So once she started cracking open that egg, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like all this stuff is here. I didn't even know it was here. And I think that's why for the business owner, sometimes the Lord is taking you to write the memoir whether you publish it or not, because sometimes people are still living that you don't want that going out to, but whether you publish it or not, I feel like he wants you to go to that memoir first, a lot of times for the healing so that when he launches you, you don't self-destruct taking off. Mm -hmm. mm, I love that so much. What a great analogy. Okay. So let's talk about why we should write a book. How can a book help us We've kind of alluded to it, but from your perspective as a publisher and, and editor and ghostwriter and all the things you do, why should we take that initiative to write a book? Because so many people <laughs> yeah, yeah, think, I, I can't write. I don't know how to write. So right. why should we put ourselves out there to write a book? I think the memoir is a lot of the healing. I've, I've found that over and over and over again. If he has called you to write a memoir, it's basically for healing. Yes, it can help other people. And a lot of times we focus on, on like, yeah, I just want to help people with my story. And this is my trauma story. And I want to help people in that. But it's like, we need to kind of pull back sometimes and go, okay, God, if there's any area in me that still needs healing, do the work first so that then I could heal people. And it's you're writing from hurt to heal to help. So for the memoir, those are the three phases that you go through. And it's to hurt, to heal, to help. And people want to jump straight to help without going through the hurt phase and the 
healing phase. And when I wrote my book with the 14 year wilderness, it's called uh, wilderness season. Uh, you know, my friend read it and she's like, Oh no, no, no. There's like way too much hurt in here. You need to back this up. You need to work through your hurt and, and make it more hope filled and redemptive. So on the memoir side, I would say that on the business side, I would say it would be three things that I have found. It is either to bring in quality leads, increase your influence or build your authority. And the final one that's an extra one is leaving a legacy. So it can be a fourth one as well in there, mm -hmm. but it's increasing your influence, build your authority and leaving a legacy. The quality leads is you're vetting people because people want to get to know you better. They want to be in your world first and kind of test you out before they work with you. So it's qualifying your leads um, so that they know, yeah, I really do want to work with them. So then they'll move forward and the book is a good way to, to um, you know, those leads to come in and to figure that out. Increasing your influence and building your authority. We have one of our authors, Anthony Brown, who was homeless for 20 years and he became a college professor. So he has a complete trauma background, you know, domestic violence, watch his mom being shot in the kitchen from the dad. So, you know, huge drugs. There's a lot of trauma there. So he has um, now become, which is really fun. He was a college professor, but now he's become a nurse practitioner and he's opening up Brown Manor in Ohio for the homeless. And wow. he's been asked to be on um, state committees, legislation, like kind of the government has now opened up because this is a huge issue in a lot of major cities. And so this has completely you know, built his authority and increased his influence in government even. And so it's just been really fun to see the doors that are opening to him. Uh, he's already had a producer approach him for um, a documentary on his life. So there's just like all these fun things that have happened after, after the book came out. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. So let's talk about some strategies that if God's laid it on our heart to write a book, what are some strategies we can use to approach writing a book effectively without getting so overwhelmed or letting fear and intimidation hold us back? Okay. So I have a golden nugget. Are you ready for the golden nugget? <laughs> Love golden nuggets. So, loved golden nuggets. So what you want to do is write down in business. If you're writing the business book, write down your client's most painful problems that you're solving. So write down their pain points. And then those pain points, drum roll, <laughs> become each chapter of your book. Mm -hmm. So you're solving the problems and you're going through the book on the different pain points that your clients go through. Then when they read it, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, she really, really gets me. She understands what I'm going through. I really want to work with them. That's awesome. Okay. So do you have, I mean, that is such a great place to start. Like I, I love it. And that's exactly how I wrote my first book. So there will be a business book coming hopefully in the next <laughs> year. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so that is such a great point. I love all of that. Now, as we approach writing, do you, it can be really intimidating, intimidating to not know like how many words do I write? How long should the book be? How long should each chapter be? Can all, one chapter be really short? One chapter be really long? Can you give us some of the nitty gritty as we approach writing each one of these chapters to address the pain points? Yeah, I would say one of the things practically is write what's on top of mind. Mm -hmm. So whatever pain point comes to you first, sometimes what we do is we get in our brain and, and it's right brain, left brain. So we get in our brain and we try to be in both worlds and you need to be fully in that creative mode of your brain and just whatever comes out, comes out. If it's not in sequential order, that, that's fine. Go back later. Don't try to edit as you write, because again, you're, you're skipping brains on that. So just focus in on what's top of mind what's coming out and then later go back and edit later go back and go oh this is this chapter this gets moved here that sort of thing 
for an ebook, ebooks are good legions. So giving away a free ebook is always a great idea. Ebooks are about five to 20,000 words, usually in that range. A regular book that you're writing uh, for business, it could be 50 to 60,000 words. I would say you would need at least a minimum of 30,000 words to look like a book. Anything less than that, and it gets really skinny, and it's hard to put like the the title on the spine and that sort of thing. So I would say at least 30, usually between 50 and 60. Some people will, will really like those smaller books. So don't be afraid that if it's a smaller book, it's if they can blow through it in a night or two, sometimes they'll love you for that because it's like, oh, I finished it really fast, you know. <laughs> Or it was Check. a good bath. It was a good bathroom read, you know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you know fun. that's funny. Uh, yeah. Check done. Right. We got that off my list. Um, and if they can learn something to then implement in their business really quickly, that's an added bonus. Oh yeah. You want to give them the quick wins. Mm -hmm. And I would, the other, the other tip I would give is niching down four levels deep. So a lot of businesses, you know, you have your ideal client that you work with. I'll give you an example of, of leveling down uh, four levels. One of my clients works with single women. And mm -hmm. so we, we branded her and came up with the title, Hey Single Lady, which I love. Love She's it. Hey Single Lady.com. So it's easy to remember if she goes on to podcasts, if she does any kind of media, whenever she talks about it, you can always remember that. And so you would think, oh, well, she leveled down. She's working with single ladies, but it's like, well, what do the, your single ladies look like? Okay. Well, they're single, they're Christian, they're in their thirties and never been married and no kids. So that's pretty specific, but it's great because when she talks to them, if I talk to that demographic or that target audience, that's going to be a lot different than a divorced mom with kids. Mm -hmm. The way that I talk to each of them is going to be very, very different. And so your communication with them and the things that you speak about in the book are going to be very targeted for that group. And don't, don't be fearful of, of niching down that type because that's where you have to start. And it's almost like an hourglass. So you start off real tight and then you can go back out more general, but at the beginning, you need to get as tight as you can. Mm -hmm. I used to say that I'll use that example of the hourglass all the time with, Oh, you did. That's yeah. Funny. With your, with like your personal brand and niching down because you have all these creative ideas right at the top and yeah. you're multi-passionate and this, that, and the other, but you can't truly focus and have clarity until you bring that in. And then once you have that clarity and confidence in a small area, you can expand and build upon that. So I love that you exactly. use that that hourglass <laughs> example, because it is, impa it's yeah. imperative for, for everything in business yeah. and, li and life in general. Yeah. So, and I want to emphasize too, that when you narrow it down to such an intense focus of who you're speaking to, you, you can eliminate the scarcity mindset because you're not actually eliminating people. You're opening do the door to the people that you want to reach. But sometimes when we talk about, oh, well, I'm going to niche it down to this specific set of people, like four levels down, like you suggested, that scarcity mindset can come into play. Well, I can't do that because then I'm going to miss the boat on so many other people. And that means I won't sell as many or I won't make as much money. Right, right. So I love that you emphasize that because I think it does give more power and authority to what we're, to what we're writing and to whom we're speaking to. And I always say Jesus niched. <laughs> Jesus only picked 12, 11 made it. Um, he only went after the Jews and not the Gentiles at the beginning. Jesus completely niched. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, he had a very specific targeted group of people that he poured into and yeah. yes, he poured into the masses, but he was very focused and specific on his group that was then going to go out and share it to the world. Yeah. Okay. So Sherry, you're a publisher. So yes. obviously you think that we should have a publisher, but what can you just tell us like for that person? That's like, well, I don't have a lot of money to get this book published. I'm just going to try to do it myself and self publish. Can you tell us the benefits, the pros and cons of having a publisher versus doing it ourselves? I'm so glad you asked that. We, this was a complete setup and you didn't even ask for it, but I have a free giveaway called the publishing process guidebook. And it's, 
it's a, that exact thing. It takes like your time and then all the different publishing options. It takes your finances and all the publishing options. It takes your copyright, um, how much royalties, like it breaks everything down into charts so that you can easily scan and see. Uh, one of the biggest things I would say is the one I would stay away from is obviously vanity presses. Those are the people that just want to take your money and run and they don't do anything. Um, the other one is self-publishing. When you just go straight self-publishing, unless you're doing it 100% for healing and that's it, um, but not the business piece of it or for selling books or for any kind of upsells on the back end. Um, I would stay away from self-publishing because usually when people come to me and they've self-published, I'll go look at it on Amazon. And, and like within two seconds, I can tell it's self-published. Like the mm -hmm. covers aren't great. The titles aren't good either. Um, I would stay, stay away from the Christianese. Uh, you know, titles that are just so broad, like love is the way it's like, what does that even mean? Like, and who's your artist? You know, you have no idea. So I would stay away from just the self-publishing for those reasons and one more. And it's the launching you piece. I feel that we are launched in community. I have seen my authors that are in our community and they are so much further ahead than just the people doing it on their own because they're for each other. We've had over 20 computers given away to people to help them write their books that didn't have computers. We've had uh, just people go into bookstores and negotiate shelves for their books, but not just their books, but for their group in their cohorts. And so like, because they went in, you know, the, the generosity and the camaraderie and the community and the contacts that each other can make is just invaluable that you just don't get on your own. So I really feel like God launches us in communities. Mm -hmm. It's so it that, is nice to have that support. That was the model that I had when I published my book. And it there was a lot to be said about that camaraderie and the support. Because when you're writing, like you think, oh, I can just sit down and write. Most people think I can't write. So either way, no matter which side of the fence you're on there, you do get stuck sometimes. And especially if you're writing a memoir and you have experienced anything negative in your life, any trauma in your life, because it does, it gets in your head. Like it can really, yeah. you know, emotionally, yeah. you know, block you. So it is important to have that support and community. So if we're talking about publishing, like say using a publisher like you, which you're mm -hmm. a hybrid publisher, is that or right? Or a hybrid publisher, yeah. Yeah. So if you're, if people are looking to publish a book, what can they budget for? Like they may have the money in their bank account right now, or they may need to budget for this because it's more of a personal project than a business project. So how do you suggest they plan for the finance of the book? That's a really good question. It depends what route they're going because we offer every different level. So we have the DIYers that are still in the community and those Price points are very low. They're, you know, entry point 37 to 100 bucks, maybe up to 500. You know, some of the things and the templates and the tools and all of that, that's on our christianauthorshop.com. And then if they want the done for you, those can range anywhere from seven, eight thousand, nine thousand in that range. And then if it's ghost writing and they are completely writing it for you, then Normal ghostwriters are, I, I have a friend that's a ghostwriter and he's 50 to 75,000. Um, ours are probably more in the 20,000 range for ghostwriting. So it just depends because it's a lot of work to ghostwrite. I mean, one mm -hmm. of my, one of my editors is also uh, a writer as well. And it took her four years to write one of the books for our, we have a gal that's been human trafficked. And so she worked with her for four years on that book. So it's a lot of investment of time when you're ghostwriting. So we've got every different price point. It just depends on how much help they want, but no matter what, I think you need to be in community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's key. It's key. Sherry, um, thank you so much for being here. Where can the listeners learn more from you or even hire you to help them publish their first book? So our I website is squaretreepublishing.com. 
And we also have a free uh, giveaway for your, your audience as well. So that is authorcalling.com forward slash Robin. So R-O-B-Y-N. And so authorcalling.com forward slash Robin. And they can get that publishing um, sheet that I talked about where it has all the um, the different areas and what's the best, best publishing option for you. And that took my team 10 hours to put together. So that's not a fluff piece. That's a, that's a lot of time went into putting that together. So. Awesome. We will share the links to your site and everything in the show notes. Listeners, thank you for being here. And if you are getting ready to embark on the writing journey to write a book or just to write your memoir and maybe never even publish, but use it to healing. I would love to hear about it. Um, you know, share it with us. You can email us always, you know that, or just post about it and share it with the world so that they can expect and anticipate what you have coming forward. So Sherry, thanks so much for being here. And listeners, if you found this information helpful, please share it with those that are in your community who might be wanting to write a book. And if you would be so kind to leave a rating and review, of course, that would warm my heart, but also help us be able to get great guests like Sherry and reach more people to create that ripple effect of good in the world. All right. I'll see you all next time.